We're at home today doing a few modifications slash installs on the NAV and the MUX. Just thought I'd film a little video on it because we do have a few different things that we're doing. And I believe we're starting with the MUX first. Dad just put new seat covers in, didn't really need to film that, they're pretty obvious, but they're Outback Equipment front and back seat covers. And the other thing he's doing, which is a bit more exciting, is installing a 40 litre water tank on the back floor. So that's the MUX upgrades for today. And then for mine, I'm doing the extended bump stops in the rear, which is to stop the tires rubbing on the chassis and on the tray on full flex. After I got that long travel kit, they just come up that little bit too high. So it'll just stop that happening and stop the wheels flogging in there. The other option was to get rims with a wider offset. I didn't really want to get a whole new set of four rims. Plus then once you bring them out, they're going to become illegal and more stress on wheel bearings. I've also got a few spare parts here out of someone that was parting out a nav that had 38,000 kilometers on it. So I've got that extended headlight bracket to go down in the back there. And then these are all spare parts because I thought I'd get together a few spare parts while I had the opportunity to get some decent secondhand ones. After that Cape York trip, I really realized I do need to start taking some spare things with me. So I've got a CV alternator starter motor, none of which need to be put in now, but I can carry them with me on the bigger trips. And then the other thing going on mine today is from front runner, a table that slides in under the roof rack. So that should be pretty cool. Keen to test that out. I've also finally got these ARB Solus spotlights wired up to the nav. They're wired up and working, but they're not properly aimed or anything. So tonight I might uh, just head down the road or something and aim them up and sort of see how they go. This is the first one going in, the 40 litre water tank. Where did you say it's, it's from? It's called Outback Equipment. So what's the plan for what is this? It's just a pl poly tank, is it? Plastic? Yeah, it's a poly tank, 40 litre holding, and then it takes me away from my five litre three or four bottles in the truck. I think it's going to be a great idea. Because you don't, you just carry little water bottles I around, don't you? I carry little water bottles and I reach around when I come up every next hill to find the next one for a <laughs> drink when I'm puffing. <laughs> Water goes in there, is that right? Yeah, it fills the, from the top. So you just tip water in, spray it in the hose or out of a bottle before you head yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. And then you can get water out of it. Are you going to put, so you're going to put taps on yeah, both sides? Yeah, more about that. I'll probably only put one tap. And then just bung up the other side. Yeah, bung the other side. Yeah. That is a plumber, so he knows. Yeah, so we're going you plumbing know, here. We you, know how, you should know how to put a tap in. <laughs> we're using a half inch m &F extension to get it out a bit further. The tap, little quarter turn tap. We'll end up leaving it on its side and clip a hose on it with a hose out to fill water bottles rather than juggling around the truck looking for water bottles. I ran out of water the weekend just gone actually. It was painful. <laughs> thread tape does the ceiling. Thread tape the tap. And then we get an apprentice plumber after that to fit the tap. <laughs> <laughs> so how to change a plan, what's the new plan? Put an elbow on the tank, run it back and get the tap in the open away from the pillow and the, the pillow <laughs> pillar pillar the pillar the door pillar and it'll straddle the console as it's normally so it won't bounce around it's the right way around now then yeah it's back to the right way and around yeah, it's which... bringing it out and then extending it back up so you got the tap up here where you need it yeah we've got the tap in the open area of the door so you can simply tap control to the hose out to fill water bottles yeah, or extension, extension elbow, extension tap. Yep. Easy access to the tap. And then a bung going in the other side. Yeah, we're going with one only tap, would you saw it. That's it all done, is it? Yeah. We're gonna pump some water into the tank. We use the same setup, well that's out of my car, so that's how I get water into my tank. Dad can probably use as well or get his own one day at some point. So we can just pull up and out of a creek. Or obviously if you're at home out of a couple of big buckets, pump in there and then the hose in the top of the tank. Yep, and there's water. Need to buy that hose fitting for it to bring it out and they'll be ready to go. That's it, all set up, in and done. One issue we realise though is maybe you, are, you do need to have taps on both sides because it raises up a little bit in the middle there. It means if you drain all the water out of that side, you're still going to have water stuck in over this side. Maybe you get taps on both sides, or I guess once that side empties out, I just sort of lift this side up a bit and push it all over that way. Rather than that's all ready to go, isn't it? Yeah, so it's just a matter of trying it on. We'll get a hose fitting and hose for here. You've got 40 litres of water now, but anyway, which is good for bigger trips. For sure. 
What's it like having passengers in the back now? Do they just sit their feet on that, I guess? Yeah. It's strong, strong stuff, isn't it? Yeah, strong stuff. They don't recommend standing on it, but you can put your feet on it without any trouble. So, uh, is, is it, does that table fit between? It looks like it should fit between that. This is the table from front runner going in now, so it's got a little bit of weight to it. That's probably the only thing that worries me. It's a big stainless food grade table. It's high quality, super well built. They are a little bit of money though. So that's gonna slide in under the roof rack to so be able to pull it out and use it that way. So we've got to mount these up onto the roof rack, which is where it'll slide in. I'll pull these treads off out of the way. The good thing about these front runner roof rack is they have slot channels, channels in each of the rails that fit M8 bolts. So you can sort of make up your own mounting system for things using M8 bolts. That's what I did for these treads. I just got big 100 mil M8 bolts that slide down in there. Got a little uh, thing to go on the top to screw them up. And then that way you don't have to really buy any sort of specific mounting or anything for it. Now once you undo those top wing nuts, this is what you got here, your four big bolts. And they just slot in those channels. Just obviously space them out to fit your recovery tracks. You're working upside down underneath the rack, which makes it a bit hard, but these are the M8 bolts. Four on this one, four back on that one, and then we'll be able to do them up underneath to mount your two rails. That's those two rails in underneath. It'll now allow you to slide the table on and sit them up on that. We're just doing everything loose and hand tight, trying to roughly work out the dimensions and where everything needs to sit, and then we can tighten it all up. I guess uh, there's a bit of weight to that table, but it's not that hard to pull out and just leave your brackets there. No. If you want to take it off, depending on what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, depending where you're going. Yeah, if you don't, if you want. Because it's only that latch. That's it all up in there now. So obviously you just have to put the latch, work out exactly where it fits, and then we can tighten it all up. That whole thing there is your latch. And then, then you just need to bring the table back so it's holding then, it. Because then you push that, and that lifts up, yeah. Yeah. And you'll be able to put a lock there or whatever too, yeah, I guess. We've got it all in place, we think. We're just going around tightening them all up now. I just had to leave them a little bit loose and then kind of jam the table in. Otherwise, it was going to rattle around when I drove. So I kept them loose, pushed the brackets right back, jammed into the latch. And yeah, I think it's all pretty sturdy in there now. Do these last couple up and pull it out and test it out. So if I push that up, unless that, pull it out. And yeah, pretty cool stainless table for using around camp and you pull it straight off your roof there. Front runner do make some really cool accessories for their roof racks. That's one thing I like about it and I definitely like it much better than my previous roof rack I had which fell off. These are super strong. Done it up as tight as we can so I shouldn't move or rattle around. I guess one thing is it may get a bit dusty or dirty up there. So you probably have to wipe it down before use. Seems strong enough that I don't think it'll break up there like it's a really strong thing. I'll see if I can break it anyway. Fold it down, slide it back up in there. Latch it up, you're good to go. And there it is sitting up there underneath me. Obviously it's gonna get a bit dusty up there. I'm moving that around as hard as I can and can't get, get it to make any noise. So I can't imagine it'll rattle on the tracks. This is my old table, which I kept in the canopy there. But yeah, I won't need to carry that in the canopy now cause I'll have that up on the roof. This is pretty cool as well. I got from Drifter the other day is a new shovel. So it's a two piece shovel. And then you got the extension handle and the top bit. So it's a pretty cool shovel there. You can carry around, fold it up in your canopy for when you need a shovel. And you can just put the handle on the end there to have a short-handed shovel. Just have a look at these bump stops now that roof table's done. I got these ones online, Black Hawk Essential 4x4 gear. I can't remember the website I got it from. Well, that's the bump stops there. Problem is, I think these are too big. They're massive. They are progressive bump stops, so they will like come down. They're nearly up on the chassis on rest. So I don't know. If it's gonna work. And the next issue is that nut there which holds in the bump stop is actually welded on. So I don't even know how to get that bump stop out. You could probably put like a big tool up on it and unwind the whole thing. But then I don't know how you'd get 
the other one back in there because it's set up the opposite way where you drop the nut head in the top and then do it up from a bolt underneath so it's all reversed and weird so i feel like I might be back to the drawing board for this so those bump stops didn't work but i'm gonna put this new bracket in that i got i got that uh, second hand out of that navara that's been parted out uh, it's the auto headlight leveler sensor <laughs> i think it is so yeah it's just an extended bracket to go over the long the long travel kit because my old one See, that's your rear brake booster as well. That still works fine. The bracket is tied up there out of the way, so now I'll be able to actually use that bracket again, which is bolted onto the diff there. I think it's to do with when you're braking or when you're coming up over crests, it auto levels out your headlights in the front because they're LEDs, so they're not blinding people. See, so I'll get that bracket back in and then those he headlights will be all working properly in the front again. Not that I've ever noticed it on the roads anyway. But at least I got it in there now. There's your old one in behind there, which was too short, so it was snapping off when I was going on full travel. But as you can see, the new one's longer and it's got a longer. Where's the arm for the new one? Oh, yeah, behind there. It's got a longer arm on it, too. There it is, in and done up. So obviously, as you drop down, as your diff comes down and you're traveling, then that whole arm just moves up and down with it. So we're not 100% sure if that's on the right setting, but we'll find out if it snaps off, I guess. <laughs> That's about all the mods done at home for today. If anyone has any suggestions for those bump stops, I don't really know what to do there and I'm not the smartest mechanical person. So yeah, I don't know if anyone has a solution to that. Gonna wash this car now because I went away on the weekend. It's got a bit of mud and dirt on it. I went for a drive on the beach as well. So I need to wash all the sand off from underneath it. And then tonight we'll head out and test out those lights. Well, I've come out the bush to test out these new lights. Now, uh, they are the ARB Intensity Solus Spotlights. One is a spotlight, meaning it'll give you the distance, but not as much spread. And then the other is a floodlight, which, which means it won't give you as much distance, but it'll give you much more spread. So I've got one of each, that way you get a bit of a combination of the best of both worlds. Now I haven't really properly tested these out yet, so I'm going to give them a flick on and see how bright they are and see how they compare to the other ones I had before, because they were quite small. These are obviously a, a much bigger light. That's on low beam now, and then I'll turn these on and see what I reckon. They're definitely much brighter than the ones I had before. Wow, that really lights up the track in front of you there. The immediate issue I can see is I definitely need to bring them down a bit. So that's why I came out. Either one or both of them is pointing a little bit skyward. You're sort of nearly looking at the top of the trees there. If you have a look here in the car, I've got a switch where you can turn them up or down. So that way, depending on how much light and how bright you want it, you do have that ability to adjust them a bit as you go. They are wired up to the high beam, so they automatically come on with the high beam or you can fully turn them off. Russell at Warhope Hastings Auto Electricals, I think it's called. He's the one to install these for me. So I said I'd just put towels over the other lights and then individually line each one up at a time then you'll be able to get it nice and accurate so I've just loosened the side bolts a bit still a bit stiff but then I'll be able to get a get them nice and solid where I want them then just nip them back up that looks like the spotlight one I feel like that's pretty good where it is now never line that up yeah that's definitely the flood one so that's the flood and that's the spotlight because you can see now I got a wider spread there I think that one needs to come down a little bit as well maybe yeah floodlight and spotlight there they are together you can see so far can you see it on the camera well how far it is yeah yeah I feel like you can like look out all the way out there so one more time that's your low beam and then there's your spotlights turned on you're obviously never going to be able to see it as well on the camera. I can tell you now, you can see a bloody long light, bloody long way with those lights, and you're not really going to be able to need to see any further than that anyway. I can see up there before the track diverts around the corner. See those trees about 500 meters away up there. 
definitely happy with them. Spotlights are super helpful on the track at night if you get caught out doing four wheel driving. Trying to four wheel drive with your normal lights, like obviously can be done if need be, but you just can't see the track around you and, and in front of you very well at all. You're trying to sort of spot out rocks and ruts and everything and you're squinting trying to work out what's going on. Whereas with spotlights, you can obviously see it way, way easier and much better. And then if you're doing any night driving, you can really, like on the main roads, you can really right, light right through it. <laughs> oh my you, God. Just keep going. You can really light up everything really well around you. See, up at Cape York, I didn't have these wired up and I was driving down the PDR at night and there was a bloody nightmare. We had a pig run out in front of the road in front of us on the road there at once. I wrote down a couple of the statistics of these things, which I'll read out if anyone is interested. The power on them is 165 watt. They draw 2.4 amps. The raw output is 18,178 lumens. Three and a half kilos per light. Three year warranty. Says they've got a 50,000 hour lifespan. They are IP68 rated, which is the better one because you've got IP67, then IP68, which is like fully dust and waterproof. It actually says these are submersible up to three meters underwater. I definitely do like to put things underwater, so I'm sure I'll test that out. Hopefully not three meters, but if I'm three meters underwater, then probably got a bit of a serious <laughs> going on but uh, yeah other than that it's just a heap of crap don't really need to know the rest but they're the few important things all right wrap this video up I need to go home and start editing and putting it together what i did do though from earlier that water tank install on dad's four wheel drive i put a couple of things up on instagram and a couple of people asked me actually i'll turn this off whether i had a discount code and i didn't but i did email the company which made the water tank, which is Outback Equipment, or made it, or they stock it, supply it, whatever it be. And they gave me a 10% 10 discount code. I'm pretty sure it is. I just need to recheck that email, but I'll put it up on the screen across their whole website, and they got heaps of different stuff on there. So if you are interested in a water tank or the car seats we got or anything else, then that is available to use. Hopefully you enjoy the video, and that's it. And thank you. Good boy. <laughs> just thought I'd film a little video on it because just thought I'd film a little video on it because we do have a few different things going on and the other option was to get wheels with a <clears throat> This is the water tank going in first, 40 litre one. Do you know I forget who it's from, do you know? I can't forget. Is it the same guys is it the same one the seat covers? I'm not certain of that. I've got to get those stickers to time that out. Is it the one on the fridge? So yeah, I'll just get that. <laughs> Do you need a you want to try it, bud? No. One is a flood beam. No, it's not a But well, that's obviously that's on low beam now. And then should we turn that light off? Wow. 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 Definitely happy with them. I'm not gonna need I already said all that. The raw output is 18,000, one, the raw output, the raw output.